All right, perfect. For today's Power webinar, we will be focused on Family Law Software Cloud. And in the cloud today, we will be discussing data entry. So we're going to go over some simple stuff, some more complicated stuff, and we're going to kind of go over the way that our program thinks. And uh, hopefully it'll give you a better understanding and get you more efficiently through the program. If you have not met me before, my name is Anna Tate, and I am an attorney with Family Law Software, which is a center-based company. And today, also joining me is attorney Nancy Schaefer. She is going to be monitoring the chat today. She was the presenter last week. All of these videos are available on our YouTube channel, and if you want to sign up for other Power webinars that will be continuing through this cold season, uh, please go to our website to sign up for those. The Q&A is open. Please pop those questions in there and Nancy will get to them as quickly as she can. If there's a common question that keeps popping up, um, I invite Nancy to interrupt me so that I can get to those. All right, I am going to share my screen now. And so what you are seeing is familylawsoftware.com. Again, if you click live training on our main website, this is going to bring you to our training section. And if you want to see the past webinars, please go to our YouTube channel here, subscribe, and that way you'll get notifications of new videos as they are posted. The first webinar is already there. Uh, and then you can join us for a list of other webinars this season. If I do not dive deeply into a topic today, it's because we're going to have a webinar that goes into it in much more detail. All right, so let's get started with the content. So I am going to enter the cloud platform. And so to do that, I type in my email password and I click log in. And now I am in Family Law Software Cloud. We're going over data entry today. So we're going to jump right into it. If you are a desktop user, it's going to look very similar. All the same tools just offline in your desktop. Make sure that you're updating. Uh, but for those of you that are using cloud, it's going to look just like this. So for today's webinar, I am going to use a sample file. And so you can open this in any state. So I'm going into settings and I'm going to open the sample file and I'm loading it. So again, you can do this in the desktop or the cloud. So data entry, let's just start talking about it. So it doesn't matter what state you're in. Uh, my program is set to Florida and I'll change the program to another state just so you can kind of see some other places as we go along. But again, it's the same gist. What is data entry all about? So in my sample file, if you were to load this, you will see Taylor and Blake and generally the same numbers and calculations, just a little different depending on your taxes and your state. But the way that family law software works is you enter data in the enter data folder. And so all data goes into the enter data. All of this data is going to multiple places. So in family law software, especially for first time users, it can be a little strange because you are thinking, I want to build a child support calculation or worksheet. And where do I click that to start? That's not the gist of family law software. The gist is everything goes into the enter data and it goes everywhere you need it to go after that point. And so this will all be in the order most similar to your state's forms. That is our goal. And so many states look very similar to this, but some states look a, very different. But generally, this is going to be a very familiar menu to the majority of the people on this webinar. You might have some more state specific things, but everyone is going to have a child support calculator. And so this will focus on child support but all of these numbers also flow into these sections. Everyone's going to have an income and expense. Everyone is going to have assets and liabilities, obviously, because they affect every dissolution case across the country. Uh, the more specific things are going to be state by state. You don't have to start with child support. Our program will start you in child support. And so you might have parties that don't have children. And it might be frustrating that the first 
tool that we bring you to or the first data entry is child support. That's perfectly fine. You can jump right into the final section, assets and liabilities, jump around. That is completely up to you how you enter data. I'm going to open up parties and children. You all are going to have this no matter the state that you are in. And so that's why I'm going to start here, parties and children. You'll notice a few things. Videos and help are at the top. And there's a lot of yellow here. Yellow means we need information from you. So when you see all this yellow stuff, that means we need information from you. I'm going to open up Taylor's folder. And if you were to do this, you would see the same dates in the sample file. What would be different for you is the state of filing. It's yellow. So we'll assume that your state of filing is where your billing information is from with family law software. But for those of you, especially that practice in the Northeast, uh, if I change where the party lives, which is a data feature, I could say they live anywhere in the US. And if they are in a taxable state, a state that has an income tax, you know, I'm talking about Maryland, Maine, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, I'm talking to all of you, uh, you can change the party's uh, state where they get taxed. And all of the forms will stay the same, uh, but we will calculate their, their income taxes that way. So that's all about the yellow fields. So I'm going to move into income and expenses. Again, I'm still in the state of Florida. We try to model your state's forms, but don't worry about the specifics on that. Everybody is still going to have income. And so again, all of this is yellow. So I enter the information here. But in this case, Taylor makes $25,000 a year we are automatically going to calculate the taxes based off of this income that I've entered. So let me change her to $90,000 a year. Everyone has a tax calculator built in that is automatically working in family law software. You don't have to enter taxes. It's not a part of your data entry. We are constantly asking for income sources, gross. If you want to see our tax calculations, then you just go into reports. So as you're building, we have reports that are in the enter data that you can easily see. So my affidavit and my child support. But if I go to reports and I click view edit taxes, this is the automatic tax calculation that is happening in the background for every single family law software users. And I bring you this here because notice that everything is blue. That yellow color, the carbon paper copy color is gone. Everything is blue. Why? Math. We did all of this math for you. And we did it automatically based off of the gross salary that we entered, which was $90,000 for Taylor. And this is the full tax calculation for both of the parties. Again, if you have a sample file and you come here, you're going to see all of this is the same, especially if you followed along with the $90,000 of income that I entered for Taylor. Now, try not to get dizzy. I'm scrolling all the way to the bottom. If you're a tax professional, maybe you don't agree with our taxes. You think they should be higher or lower, uh, or you want to adjust state or local income tax wages. This blue number, I can type in 2,000 and the number turns red. If you ever see a red number in family law software, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It means that we made a suggestion or we did a calculation and you didn't like it or someone in your office didn't like it and they changed it. And so this $2,000 here, I updated the uh, I updated the taxes here. Why? Maybe I have a better calculation of their local taxes. They might, I mean, they might live somewhere where they have a state income tax and a county tax and a city tax. I mean, it's just, so we might not have that much of detail for that particular area, that particular issue. And you might want to plug that in. That's perfectly fine. The problem with the red numbers that you're going to have, that you're going to see is that if you have red numbers, in the program, you're clogging up the program and staying stuck with these taxes in this case. So $2,000 in uh, local taxes. Why is that a problem? 
if I later increase this person's income and I say, oopsies, I forgot to put in the $30,000 bonus, their taxes will still be stuck here. And so you're kind of putting like a little, a little wrench in the program. And so when you're using other tools and analysis tools, they're not going to be complete because of this red number. And so if you find that issue or you're ever in contact with myself or Nancy or a tech support team, and we see these red numbers, we're going to ask you to delete them. So if I highlight this and delete it, it goes back to the original calculation. And that was super easy to do. And so please note that we don't encourage overriding, but sometimes it, it can be necessary either because your professional opinion is leading you that way or the parties are insisting or, or whatever the case may be, you're the practicing a professional. And so ultimately you have to make that decision, but it's super easy to do. The same thing happens in the desktop. And so a red number can easily be deleted just by highlighting and deleting it and, and you're done. And then you are done. Uh, so if there's any questions about that in the chat, obviously let us know. All right, so let's go into um, some more calculations and some more data entry. So I'm going back into the enter data, which is where we're going to spend a lot of our time. And so this is where, let me go, let's just do some child support because it's a little easier of a printout, I guess. All right. So I am in a child support calculator. So I'm in child support and I'm in wages and filing status. This will look familiar to all of our users. Side by side, I have Taylor and Blake and I have their income here in yellow. And when I'm ready to print my child support guideline worksheet, you'll notice here that we've made it easier to find you enter your data here and then you go and you click print guideline and all of your data is going to be here. So I have calculated child support in this particular state. If you don't like these numbers, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a state. So I'm going into settings and I'm going to change this state to Illinois because Illinois has a child support and maintenance calculation. So again, all of this still looks super familiar even though I've changed my state. Um, I still have all of these numbers. And at the top, I can see what child support is. All of this data is being used to calculate that. If your state has um, a maintenance or alimony calculation or spousal support calculation, you're going to see that you have a print maintenance as well. And so you're able to print that simultaneously. And um, if you ever need to make changes because you don't, you don't wanna use the support for whatever reason, on your child support calculation, you'll be able to come in here and you can manually change spousal maintenance or child support here. And we're going to have a webinar that goes much more into detail about um, support and maintenance. So that's going to be in a few weeks. All right, let's keep going with our data entry. Um, so again, let's go into assets and liabilities now. All right, so assets and liabilities. Here we go. Everyone's screen is going to look like this with assets and liabilities. Users very frequently do not pause here. So when I'm entering data, so we're entering assets and liabilities, you will have these options at the top. And so if you have a case where you have a lot of separate non-marital property or you're really on top of it and your parties already have valuation dates or family law software is a two-party system, which I can understand can frustrate people. This is a two-party system. It takes two to be in family court. Um, by default, we don't know who's paying what or who owns what. So there's different allocations at the top. 
And then for title, we use their initials. If they have the same initials, you can change this. And this is an instance where red is not bad <laughs> at all. You can definitely do that here. Um, and it's not really going to have any negative consequences. It's just changing a text field. So let's start. So these are all options. So they will be added. We try not to overwhelm the users. We try to help the users. And so let's talk about, I'm gonna do this piece of real estate here. Let's open up data. Again, uh, all of this is yellow. And so we're asking for this information. I'm going to change this just so you can see it. Cause I'm gonna show you where this is going. This is the condo. I'm gonna call it the beach condo. <clears throat> this is the value percent to Taylor. In this case, this will always be blank, but if you want to allocate a percent of the property to her, you can. Title is all about ownership. Remember, I changed one of their initials to ZZ because I thought that I didn't, the initials were too close um, or they have similar initials. And then affidavit, whose affidavit is going on. So again, these are all questions because we are building your financial statement. We're building budget reports. We're also building your equitable distribution worksheet as well. So if you do not enter, um, we, need, we need you to allocate. Why? So this could be marital. And so this is the value. Um, I have a mortgage balance here, the monthly payment, and then who's paying. With real estate, we ask a lot of questions, but most importantly is, who pays? By default, it's going to the first party, which is our client, but maybe Taylor is not the money spouse. Maybe Blake is the money spouse and they're paying for everything. Why is this important? It's because of the mortgage interest. It's going to affect their tax calculation. Um, it's also going to affect their income flow, et cetera. So in real estate, it's really important that we just pay attention to these little check boxes. And uh, there's a lot more going on. And this is not just with real estate, this is with every item. So again, yellow, we're asking for information. Everywhere throughout the program, we are going to have this green box here. And so if you're a user and you're wondering, well, wait a minute, it's, it's mixed, it's part marital, or it's non-marital, or it's a rental property, or it could be a number of things. Find this green box or what we call more info in the desktop. And it's going to ask me more information about this particular topic. So I click this box and it brings me to a whole other suite of questions and issues that could be related to that piece of property. And so if this were separate non-marital, this is a place where I could mark that. So I would open this and say it's entirely non-marital and that it's just, it belongs to your client. Like we're, this is just like a non-issue. Um, or this might not even be if in your state, if this isn't an issue, marital versus non-marital property, then obviously you wouldn't, don't even come here. It's not an issue. Uh, second mortgage, mortgage, et cetera, sale and basis. So anytime that you're using family law software, we are asking the basics upfront. And if you need to dive more deeply into that topic, then 100% you want to go and click that green box. Something where this also happens is, let me close real estate and let's talk about debt. So I'm going to open up the debt folder. And so something that's happening, I'm going to add a debt just so we can see what it looks like new. This description is following. So if you don't, if you print your affidavit and you don't want the account number to be there, don't put it in there. If you're the opposite and you must put the account number, then put the account number. There's a lot of space here to just kind of keep on going. And so in the debt section, the balance will say that there's a $10,000 balance and this is debt type. So you follow this down in its credit card. Monthly payment is this section here. And so what's going to happen is if I enter the monthly payment here, the next question is who's paying it? Again, I know this is, can cause frustration, especially if you're a paralegal and you're just trying to get out one form, but know that this is built into the program to have a more efficient use throughout the lifetime of the case. 
um, and then to also build an accurate financial picture of the parties. And so that's where that 100%. So I'm saying that Taylor is paying this total amount. And so this total amount will flow to her affidavit, his or her affidavit. If I were to put 50%, then only $250 of this number would flow into their finances. And the other 50% is going to go to the other party's affidavit or the other party's side of the budget report. The other questions that you're going to see here are going to be title, which is going to be ownership. And then affidavit is whose affidavit is it appearing on. So that's what these little selections are for. Um, let us know how you feel about entering data. If there's something that you commonly enter and you feel like it could be easier, obviously let us know uh, because we are we're in business for you. We are 100% business for you. Another thing that you're going to notice about data entry. So uh, let's say that I add a debt, I'm about to add a credit card or whatever it is. If you click any field here, you'll see that this pops up. So there's going to be little pop-ups throughout. What do the pop-ups do? You can actually add text values uh, or you can highlight the field. So if you didn't know that that was an option, if there's something going on in your case and you want to highlight it as something that you need to go back to, or you don't have a number yet, click on any of those fields, look for this hashtag, and you are able to say, you know, to be determined. We just don't, we don't know, we don't know yet. And so now I've got a TBD there that might be more, um, appropriate when it comes to like a real estate value or something, you know, you're just not sure. And you're, it's, it's, it's a pending value. Uh, what is happening with all of this data? So again, it is going to here. I'm in my affidavit section. Again, I think I'm still in the state of Illinois. And what am I doing? I can go to print affidavit. And so if you happen to be in Illinois, or this will still look familiar to you in many states, uh, we're going to show you your financial affidavit, your statement of net worth, whatever you call it locally. Um, the idea is it's the income and expenses of the parties. And so all of this is filling in. This is the basic functionality of the tool. Um, everything can be footnoted. So when you see these lines, um, let's go back to, let's go into income and expenses and let me go into income for Taylor in this particular case, $90,000 per year. So this green box, more information, we talked about that um, and footnotes. So in the cloud, footnotes are blue. In the desktop footnotes say FN. You know, why do you want to footnote? Um, why wouldn't you want to footnote? <laughs> so, you know, this is a footnote. Uh, these are other options for the footnote. Estimated. So if you want every line to be estimated, you have to open the footnote and click estimated. Uh, if you want the footnote to be bold, you can make it bold. Uh, if you don't want the footnote to print, it's more of a note or a reminder, you can click this box as well. Um, and this is going to help paint a picture for your fact finder. Uh, or if you are in a state where your pleadings are limited, but the financial affidavit isn't, this is a great way to get more information in front of your fact finder or court because you can footnote everything um, or if something just needs explanation. So this is what a footnote box is. Everything can be footnoted and the footnotes are going to follow this particular issue, which is the wage everywhere. So as you move forward in the program, the footnotes are going to go everywhere. So you can footnote the asset side, you can footnote the liability side. Um, and so this is a very powerful tool. And anytime that I go to a judge conference, the judges always say like, there's this ridiculous number with no explanation and it's just, just floating out there. And so tell your fact finder, you know, what's going on? Why is the number super low or super high? I'm going to click save. Footnotes have to be saved. And once they're saved, the ellipsis now turns into a filled in speech bubble. So look out for the footnotes. We discussed more information, which is the green box. 
I'm going, we're still in income for Taylor and I'm going to click this green box, which is the more information box. One of the things that is in more information is more information about that income source. So if you're a financial planner and you're building out a budget, one of the things you might've looked for is how is their income going to change over the years? Is it going to change at all or is it going to increase with inflation? Is their income subject to taxation? If so, did you want to modify that? So we don't like users to override. We like you to use the tools within the program because they are super, super comprehensive. And so we kind of talked about the basic things that are going on in family law software. And so this was, we talked about child support, which is what you're building and you're building the affidavit or the statement of assets, income expenses. What else are you doing in family law software? All of this information is flowing to the analysis tab. And so when I go to the analysis tab, you're not entering information here. You're seeing the results of the information that you've entered. Everyone has this screen. What if support impact? This is the financial picture of the parties. So all of that income that I entered, all of the taxes, all of the expenses, we're going to show them to you in a really easy to digest way. And then you can manipulate the numbers or see how um, a different spousal support impacts the parties. So this is building upon uh, more and more information. Um, and so we're kind of starting to wind down. We're almost at the 30 minute marker. Um, and so I'm just gonna show you one more screen. So we talked about building, everything in family law software is building. Um, the division of property is also located here. And so if you, if you know that you need to build a division of property worksheet, you still go through the enter data section. And when you come here, everything is flowing. So here is my beach condo. And then here is the, um, the value, the equity. And here am I, I'm dividing the property. So if I'm here and I need to increase the value of something or I forgot to enter um, a piece of data, then you would have to go back into the enter data, go back into assets and liabilities, and then make that change. So again, um, file manager is where we started the file. Enter data is where you enter every single piece of data. Please look out for help that we have built in for you. The help is you know, videos, the help is these blue bubbles, enter information in the yellow field, footnote that information, uh, clarify that information. Um, and then you always have the option to reach out to us. We wanna hear from you as the user uh, what obstacles are you facing? How can we make that easier for you? Um, and that is our power webinar on entering data. It will be available on our YouTube channel. And I am going to go into the chat and make sure we got into all of the questions. Okay, I'm still getting a couple of more questions here. So we'll stay open for a few more minutes. Um, and thank you all. It's been very active and I love all the questions. You can go to our website and see the list of um, trainings that we'll be doing and sign up for them if you haven't already. Um, we will be doing one a week for the next seven weeks and um, they will be uh, all recorded and on our YouTube channel you can access from our website. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you choose, and then you'll get notifications when we enter, when we upload more um, videos. Um, also, when you have other questions, please always feel free to reach out to support. You can click support in the uh, program and then uh, contact us, send an email, explain your issue. We have great support. And if our tech team doesn't know the answer, they will reach out to Anna and I, and we'll be happy to help you. Or, you know, of course, you can reach out to us directly. So thank you very much for joining us today.